Welcome, lords and ladies, back to the realm. I am your humble host, the Goat King, and today we explore faster-than-light travel in Starfinder. To do this, we will be pulling information from several books. Most important among them are the Core Rule Book, Character Operations Manual, Starship Operations Manual, and Ports of Call. All this information is free, however, on Archives of Nethys, linked in the description. Of course, before anybody lights up the drive, there is one essential task. One of the PCs will need to spend 10 minutes using the piloting skill to navigate. Notably, this doesn't actually have to be done before lighting up the drive, in this case a drift engine, and popping out of the material plane, but you will have to navigate before you can start traveling. The DC for this check ranges from 10 to 25 depending on how familiar you are with the destination, as well as having an accurate estimation of where you currently are. For obvious reasons, when going somewhere you haven't previously been, you will need information about where it is on the material plane, and ideally the identifiers of local drift beacons. Most of the time, Failing this check is noticeable and simply means trying again over the next 10 minutes. But if you fail by 10 or more, your mistake goes unnoticed. For drift travel, this usually means the trip takes longer, adding 1d6 days. Sometimes, however, a failure results in damaged engines or getting lost entirely, landing in a random system. Now, the usefulness of the piloting skill doesn't end at charting the path. You can spend your travel time watching for and exploiting shortcuts. Manage course is a downtime activity from the Character Operations Manual. You attempt a piloting check with a DC equal to the original Navigate DC plus 10. On a success, you reduce your travel time by 6 hours. Failing by 5 or more adds 6 hours and failing by 10 or more also triggers one of the fail states of initial navigation. You also can't reduce the travel time below the minimum plus the number of days managing course. Finally, we come to the actual technologies used for faster than light travel. First and foremost is the drift. Drift travel utilizes the plane known as the drift. It is an infinite and growing plane where there is no locality on large scales. Each point on the material plane is represented by a point in the drift, but in the drift those points are constantly shifting and rearranging. Drifting. Devices on the material plane, known as drift beacons, shine through to the drift, making it possible to track them and intentionally travel to them. The drift is impermeable to magic methods of planar travel, causing such spells to fail and keeping the plane hidden until a technological method unlocked it. Three years after the gap, the unified AI and technology god Triune revealed the existence of the drift and blueprints for the first drift engines to all life around the galaxy. Unfortunately, this signal wasn't decipherable to all, and some dismissed it as the ramblings of madmen. Still, this technology became widely used by most species across the galaxy. Drift travel was simple. Navigate a course, turn off your engines for one minute, and engage. There was one kink to the system, however. Using drift engines cut small portions of other planes and pulled them into the drift. Usually, this was no issue. The chunks would slowly dissolve into the essence of the drift and disappear. But sometimes, these chunks would bring hostile planar outsiders with them, causing dangerous encounters for the ship and its crew. Still, drift travel was the standard. Travel within a system, planet to planet, rarely caused encounters and required only 1d6 days. Travel to places with many drift beacons, the near space, took 3d6 days and often carried less than a 10% risk of encounters. And travel to places with few beacons, the vast, took 5d6 days and could carry a 50% risk of encounters. 
The exception to all the rules, however, is Absalom Station. Within the station, the Star Stone acts as an exceptionally powerful drift beacon. Travel to Absalom is almost always safe and only takes 1d6 days. How the Star Stone enables this is currently not understood. Travel beyond the Galactic Rim has not been documented and at this point is considered impossible for any known faster than light system. Drift engines and other types of faster than light drives as well have a rating. Final travel time is taken by dividing the rolled time by the engine's rating. In this circumstance, you do not round down the resulting number. Instead, you use the fraction to represent the number of days and hours it takes to get to a place. Because even in a race across the galaxy, a difference of a few hours can matter. In the setting of Starfinder, about a year ago, the drift went through a crisis. The drift crash, as it was known, violently ejected ships from the drift, often into planes other than the material plane. The crash also had lasting effects on drift travel. While this is part of a temporary event in the Starfinder setting, you can use these same rules as the standard in a slower, more dangerous setting. During the crisis, drift travel was very dangerous, and communications through the drift were unreliable, forcing ships to carry recorded messages all the way to their destinations. During this event, there were harbors, places drift travel was almost as swift as normal. Harbors, including Absalom Station, could be reached in 3d6 days. Most locations required an arduous 7d6 days to reach. But worst of all, the crisis created exclusion zones, then known as slow space. Traveling to a location in slow space requires 10d6 days. Thankfully, the drift recovered, returning to normal and leaving only one permanent change. Drift lanes now lace the drift. A fully anchored drift lane connects two planets with a direct passage through the drift. Navigating the drift is always easy, at DC-10, and the travel time through a lane, before factoring in engine rating, is always seven days. You can leave a lane midway through, but this will always cause you to arrive in a random system when leaving the drift. While drift lanes don't normally risk encountering extraplanar entities, they are a popular target for pirates. To this day, the drift lanes have not been fully mapped. There are drift lanes only anchored at one end, the opposite end usually leading to a random location in deep space. There are also drift lanes floating entirely free, having yet to settle. At the current time, it is anyone's guess as to if the lanes are truly permanent or if they will eventually fade. The drift is the most accessible, reliable, and swift method of faster-than-light travel in the galaxy. But it isn't the only method. Many other methods have existed before the drift and are still in use, even if only by a few. In general, these methods share the same travel times and risk of encounters, excluding an outlier that we'll cover last. In system, planet to planet, travel takes 1d6 days and carries a 10% encounter risk on the plane the specific drive utilizes. From point to point in the galaxy, travel takes 5d6 days and can carry a risk up to 60%. Archon drives are manufactured by the Church of Iomidae. They are used by both the Church and the Knights of Galarian to travel through heaven. Archon drives are large stained glass lanterns shining a rainbow light. The glass depicts the life and deeds of Iomidae. It is believed that prayer makes the drive more efficient. Chaos sails were created by Besmara and her church still uses them for travel through the maelstrom. This method of travel carries odd risks, as the maelstrom can rearrange ship interiors and controls, transmute cargoes, and a dozen other strange transformations. Constellation Orrery is a strange drive that allows travel along the imagined lines that make constellations. 
These lines act as a sort of ley line made of perception and intent. The Church of Abara is the only group that produces and sells these mysterious devices. Notably, a constellation Ori has a rating of 2, making them quite swift. There are elemental engines for the elemental planes, allowing travel through them. Most elemental engines in use today are in the ships of outlaws. Convenient for their ability to escape to a plane most ships don't have the engine to access. And for good reason. Ships from the material plane need to be built with specific countermeasures to survive a trip to an elemental plane. First drive is the fastest non-drift drive you can have installed on a ship. With this drive, you travel through the first world. Given the nature of the first world as a prototype of the material plane, there are limitations for where this method can take you to or from. New or relatively new places like Absalom Station, for instance, can't be reached from the first world. The only way to get access to a first drive is by dealing with an eldest. That normally means striking a nearly inscrutable bargain. The Hell Drive is used by Hell Knights and other worshippers of Asmodeus. These drives are custom built for each ship by the Church of Asmodeus, and each represents a contract for easy, if not safe, passage through Hell. The planar aperture drives of the Witchweirds are the most advanced, even if not the fastest, faster than light drives in the galaxy. Manufactured and jealously guarded by the Witchweird owned and operated Tetrad Trade Association, these are the only other type of drive that can access the drift. In fact, planar aperture drives can access any plane. The TTA take great pains to ensure these drives never fall into non-Witchweird hands. Even if one is somehow captured, without the proper codes and keys, it functions only as the most basic of drift engines. The Shadow Engine is a drive that receives no such praise, however. Operated only by Velstrax and the Church of Zong Kuthan, Shadow Engines allow you to travel through the Shadow Pain in excruciating agony. Allow isn't really the right word. It's a package deal. Faster than light travel and pain. Only the Velstrax bear it without the crushing minus two on ability checks attack rolls, and skill checks. And finally, we come to the outlier I mentioned before. Fold gates. Ancient beyond the word ancient. Their original creators were lost to history even before the gap. Curiously, there are no fold gates in near space, considering Triune and the Church of Triune control drift beacon production and placement it makes me wonder if Tryon wants the full gates to remain mostly unused. There could be many reasons for that, not least of which is what happens when fold gates are overused. I should probably have mentioned, fold gates are free-standing structures that ships pass through. They fold space-time, allowing ships to travel from end to end in only 1d8 hours. When a fold gate pair is overused, it causes immense strain on space-time. The most frequent end result is the link between the gates breaking and the gates themselves collapsing into black holes or becoming labyrinthine demiplanes. Other times, the collapse has erased whole systems. But with the fold gates, we come to a close on the faster than light methods available in Starfinder. Thank you for visiting the realm. I have been your humble guide, the Go King, and as always, travel with loyal companions.